All right. How do I get to your page? Do what? How do I get to your page? To my page? The page that you're on. Oh, <laughs> I'm like, uh, I don't know. So it's just the um, one, one love. Oh, I see what you're saying. So Travel Agent Academy. And then click on Jamaica Travel Specialist. Okay. And then you'll log into One Love Rewards and it'll talk to each other. Okay. So, all right. So I'm Andy, I'm doing the um, Jamaica Specialist Part 2 this afternoon. Um, we've already completed chapters 1, 2, and 3. So we are going to start chapter 4 today. Um, and hopefully we will be able to get through the remaining. Um, I do not believe that there's anybody scheduled after us. So if we do go a little bit over the hour, um, we should be able to finish it. All right, so chapter four, starting the chapter to Ocho Rios. And let me know if, you are seeing the small Ocho Rios start chapter because it was acting weird the other day. Yeah. Yep. No, okay, it's so still we a do see start that. chapter. Chapter four, Ocho Rios. All right. And we're still good. We can still see the small box. Cool. All right. So Ocho Rios is the north um, center of the island. Beautiful land of waterfalls, lush greenery, majestic mountains, uh, pristine shoreline. Um, it also stirred the soul of one of Jamaica's most famous musicians. What started as a fishing village on the northern coast ultimately transformed into a major destination for vacationers seeking top resorts and villas, sunny stunning natural beauty and a wide range of thrilling activities. All right, so quick overview. Uh, 50 years ago, Ocho Rios was just a small fishing village, few upscale villas and hideaways like the ever popular Jamaica Inn that welcomed people such as Winston Churchill, Ian Fleming, Noel, Cow Noel Coward, Marilyn Monroe, as well as Firefly, home of playwright Noel Coward, and now a museum. Uh, Sorry, was Judy. once the home of James Bond author Ian Fleming and is now a top luxury resort called the Golden Eye. Your, your screen is not moving. Do what? Your screen is not moving. Uh, I figured that was going to happen. All right, so let me do that and then I will share again. You see it now? Yes. Okay, cool. All right, so happily it's City Fathers and the Jamaica Tourist Board saw the potential of its verdant mountain backed shores, stunning waterfalls, running rivers, and began deepening the bay and the building out of its beaches to attract new development. All right, so planned resorts. Visitors now find a picture-perfect bay with a cruise port located steps from the edge of town that welcome between one and three liners almost every day. From here, it's easy for visitors to head out on an ever-growing number of iconic adventures, Growing array of resorts and villas offer plenty of reasons to fit, to stay. Um, Ocho Rios, or Ochi, has become Jamaica's second largest tourist center and its number one cruise port. 
All right, pop quiz. There we go. Ocho Rios is Jamaica's second largest tourist center and its cruise port is ranked as blank in the country. Number one. All right, accommodations. So lots of resorts and villas, uh, less developed than Montego Bay. Uh, the coastline of Ocho Rios and neighboring Runaway Bay reads like a who's who of Jamaica all-inclusive. So you've got Sandals, Couples, Jewel, Ryu, and Palace Resorts are among those with properties, along with family-oriented brands such as Beaches and the FDR Resort and Spa. Other choices include private staffed villas, chic properties like Island Outpost, Golden Eye Hotel, um, which used to be the home of author Ian Fleming, located 30 minutes from Ora Cabeza, uh, the Ian Fleming International Airport, located in the town of Bosco Bell, is nine miles from the tourist Mecca. I want to go there. It's beautiful. I just want to go everywhere, I think. <laughs> All right, so adventure activities. They've got waterfalls, rivers, and forest adventures in the backcountry. All right, so um, waterfalls. Ocho Rios could describe the area's many rivers, but most think it comes from the Spanish Los Correjos, which means waterfalls. The most visited is Duns River Falls uh, with a 600-foot climb and cool pools along the way. It when you think of Duns River Falls, you should think of Ocho Rios. Um, in fact, Sandals has a um, resort called Sandals Duns River Falls. Waterfalls along with Botanical Garden and a zoo set the stage for outdoor fun at Kokono Falls, which is an eco park built on the grounds of the former Shaw Park Plantation. Um, another favorite activity is floating down the White River on inner tubes, stopping to swim along the way. Uh, for an extra adrenaline rush, there's a 700-foot mystic mountain for zip lining and soaring or a bobsled-style roller coaster through the jungle canopy. Fern Gully. It's a three-mile thoroughfare that winds along the edge of a canyon under a thick canopy of fern trees and plants. Uh, fern Gully makes for a fascinating scenic drive. Sunlight filters through much of the greenery. There are spots where the foliage is so thick that passengers feel like they're riding through a tunnel. Those who choose to hike the gully will be further rewarded with an up-close view of all of the fern species and other plants. Uh, leisurely browse roadside stands selling arts and crafts such as wooden masks, animal statues, and bags. Tourists that incorporate the Fern Gully into their itineraries can be arranged for your clients, but make sure the schedule allows for photo stops. Car rentals are another viewing option, while the attraction can also be enjoyed on an affordable taxi ride between Colgate and Ocho Rios. Music, music. All right, just a few miles is the rural mountain village of Nine Mile, where reggae great Bob Marley um, grew up. Clients can tour his boyhood home, often guided by his relatives, who share tales of his life and his music. Uh, back in the main town of Ocho Rios, you've got Margaritaville, Amnesia, and Ocean's Eleven. Um, to enjoy all of the authentic music. All right. Bob Marley's birthplace is Nine Mile. Ocho Rios is Jamaica's second largest tourist center. Yes. 
Ocho Rios attracted celebrities such as Winston Churchill, Ian Fleming, Noel Coward, and Marilyn Monroe. Yes. Ocho Rios' cruise port hosts up to three cruise ships. When? Almost every day, every week, every month. Every day. The coastline of Ocho Rios in neighboring Runaway Bay is home to intimate chic properties, a who's who of all-inclusive resorts, villas, all of the above. I say all of the above. Agree. Y'all agree? Yes. Practically synonymous with Ocho Rios is which popular attraction? Dunn's River Falls. Among the activities to be enjoyed in Ocho Rios is our tubing down the White River. Yep. Zip lining. Yep. Bob Marley's boyhood home. Yep. Riding a roller coaster in the jungle. So all of the above. Visitors to Ocho Rios may tour Bob Marley's boyhood home located nearby. Yes. And to experience what it's like riding through a tunnel of leaves, visitors should go where? To Burn the Burn Gully. Gully. Whoop, whoop. All right, chapter one, chapter two, three, four, down to five. And I may have to stop sharing and reshare so that we get this small pop-up. Because I don't know why it just doesn't automatically do it when it's on the same tab, but whatever. Chapter five, Port Antonio. All right, located in the at the eastern end of the northern coast at the foothills of the Blue Mountains. Ooh, I didn't realize Jamaica had Blue Mountains. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Port Antonio is Jamaica's oldest tourism destination. Began in the 1800s, uh, boasting a long roster of celebrity vacationers by the 50s. Beautiful scenery and tales of its Hollywood past feed. Um, fascinate visitors within the town today. They will discover many more delights, both on Port Antonio's beautiful coastline and among its nearby mountains. All right, so the misty peaks of the Blue Mountains form a dramatic backdrop for the white sand coves that scallop the coastline around Port Antonio. But it was Bananas Not Beauty that made this Jamaica's first tourist destination in the 80s um, when an enterprising Boston Sea captain began transporting tourists on his banana boats. The town quickly began attracting the rich and famous, including Rudyard Kipling, Randolph Hearst, and J.P. Morgan. Nice. So Hollywood comes to Port Antonio's. Uh, so their success was steamed when a blight nearly wiped out its banana and tourism industries. Then in the 50s, Errol Flynn put the town back on the map, bringing in movie stars and throwing wild parties. Uh, Flynn had side-by-side -side seats added to the bamboo rafts once to transport the bananas so he could take his guests rafting down the Rio Grande, a popular activity still today. Um, Port Antonio's star quality had been reinvigorated with the filming of the Blue Lagoon, Cocktail, um, and more recently, the Tom Cruise Cameron Diaz movie, Night and Day, shot at Frenchman's Cove Beach. With Errol Flynn, Mariana, and the Ian Fleming International Airports, less than 90 minutes from Port Antonio, the town is experiencing regrowth. What activity that Errol Flynn is reported to have enjoyed with his Hollywood friends uh, can our clients also try? 
It was bamboo rafting, correct? On the Rio, yeah. Yep. Accommodations. Ooh, look at that. I'd be a little scared. I'm afraid of heights, so I'm not sure looking down over that cliff would be my idea, but it's still pretty. So Port Antonio's handful of small hotels, inns and posh villas create an idyllic hideaway for movie stars and serenity seeking visitors for travelers who want to get off the beaten track. Among its chic boutique properties is G-Jam, which provides guests with a state-of-the-art recording studio and a spa. Uh, the more traditional Hotel Mockingbird Hill caters to eco-enthusiasts with afternoon tea, lush hillside gardens that attract more than 72 bird species. The Trident, Port Antonio's 13 villas, provide harmonized sanctuaries with oceanfront porticos and private soaking pools. Hotel Mockingbird has lush hillside gardens that attract more than 72 bird species. Yes. That question's worded weird if you ask me, but. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Sorry, the teacher in me is looks at questions and says, mm, no, my kids wouldn't understand that. <laughs> local tours. The resort area has a network of savvy local guides who can point out endemic plant and bird species on hikes through the misty canopied forests of the Blue Mountains. One of the most interesting hikes set out from Charleston, an important center for early for early maroons, I almost said morons, escaped plantation slaves who created their own culture and lifestyle in Jamaica's mountainous interior. The hike takes in the ruins of the 18th century plantation and ends with traditional maroon drumming and dancing. Back along the coast, the mountains send broad rivers tumbling into the sea, creating lovely waterfalls along the way. Uh, some One of the better knowns is Somerset Falls, and that's where visitors can take a guided boat ride through a narrow tributary encircled by limestone caverns to the Hidden Falls. Reach Falls, often featured in photo shoots and, and videos, which cascades down in a series of deep emerald pools. One of the most scenic spots for a swim is the Blue Lagoon fed by underground mineral springs and almost encircled by verdant foliage. Ooh, pretty. Port Antonio is compact enough to explore on foot and its Georgian architecture and craft market are worth the effort. East of the town, the lavish villas, hotels, and private homes of the village of San San, San are tucked sensuously away within lush emerald forest. Ooh, try to read that 10 times fast. Here, the world famous Frenchman's Cove Beach and San San Beach um, together, once highly exclusive to just royalty and the very wealthy, are now open to all connoisseurs of the idyllic life and tropical splendor. All right, Port Antonio small hotels, inns and villas create an idyllic hideaway for movie stars and other serenity seeking visitors. That is true. Among the top attractions for nature lovers visiting Port Antonio is excursions through the Red Mountains, the Blue Mountains, the Green Mountains, the blue ones. Considered to be Jamaica's first tourist destination, Port Antonio first rose to prominence in the 1800s when a Boston sea captain began transporting tourists on his banana boat. His bananas. This celebrity put Ant Port Antonio on the tourism map in the 50s, and now there is a marina named after him. It's Errol Flynn, right? 
Is it? Or, yeah. Cheryl Flynn. Okay. Yeah. Getting confused with Ian. I know. Ian Fleming has the airport named after him, and I don't remember them mentioning Marlon Brando or Gary Cooper at all. <laughs> the town of Port Antonio is known for its craft fair, harbor vistas, and what style of architecture? George. Georgian. Clients seeking an opulent destination wedding with access to an on-site private chapel might want to consider which of the following. Ooh. Ooh. I'm going to say Trident Castle, but I don't think it said, did it? It didn't. I don't remember. <laughs> Cassie, who's any comments? Um, yeah, it never said anything about weddings. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I just Googled Trident Castle on my iPad and it says Trident Castle wedding packages. So let's go with that one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they threw that one in there. It was. <laughs> Charlestown was an important center for this group of people who escaped to Jamaica's mountainous interior to form their own culture and lifestyles. Mines. The Maroons that I want to keep reading as morons. <laughs> <laughs> A scenic spot that is splendid for swimming and fed by underground mineral springs. That is the Blue Lagoon. Or is it sand sand? Oh, no, I think it's blue lagoon. Oh, crap, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> You're no help. Oh, my God. I believe it's blue lagoon. I think so. Let me Google. <laughs> All right, so Somerset Falls. I don't think it's that one. I think it's Blue Lagoon. Me too. Has what? Um... Some of the natural elements found near Port Antonio include which of the following? All of the above. And popular activities in and around Port Antonio include hiking, swimming, rafting, guided boat tours, all of the above again? Yes. Yay. All right, chapter six. Ooh, we're going to Kingston, the capital. Stop share, screen share. Did my page flip or did I not give it enough time to link? You're good, it's all there. Okay. <laughs> All right, cool. All right, so rising up on the other side of the Blue Mountains from Port Antonio is Kingston, Jamaica's capital and cultural center, which looks out over an impressive harbor on the southeastern coast. This is where clients can learn about everything from the roots of reggae to the island's pirate past, including its British heritage, as well as the work of Jamaican artists from the 20s through today. Special treat, they can discover what the Blue Mountains have waiting for them just 30 minutes outside of the city. All right, located on Jamaica's southeast coast and served by Norman Manley International Airport, Kingston has these notable attributes. It's the seat of Jamaica's government, largest English-speaking city in the Caribbean, 
the seventh largest natural harbor in the world, has a pirate past, rich colonial history, lots of reggae roots attached, art galleries, museums, coffee plantations, and lovely vistas. Pretty. Ugh, historic sites. I never remember these. So Port Royal, Jamaica's pirate era capital. At the mouth of Kingston Harbor and mostly under the sea are the remains of Jamaica's pirate era capital, Port Royal. Dubbed the wickedest city in the world, the rowdy city was home to thousands of buccaneers, including Henry Morgan, and was featured in the 2000 movie Pirates of the Caribbean. Some say its evil ways were the reason in 1692 earthquakes shook much of the city into the sea. A rampant fire in 1703 and several hurricanes forced residents to relocate to nearby Kingston. Today, standing on ramparts of Fort Charles, perusing artifacts recovered from Sunken City and admiring Port Royal's few remaining Georgian buildings. Visitors get a glimpse of its storied past. All right, and that's Port Royal. Mm -hmm. All right, so colonial heritage. Kingston quickly grew and became the nation's capital in 1872. So many of its 18th and 19th century buildings are still in use. So the Devon House, among the most interesting buildings is Devon House built in 1881. The former stables, kitchen and other buildings now house restaurants, souvenir shops, um, and the renowned Devon House. Devon House One Screen, flagship for Jamaica's premier ice cream brand. Oh, ice cream. Okay. That's cute. Mm -hmm. So changing of the guard, Jamaica's British heritage lives on in the changing of the guard ceremony, complete with music by the Jamaican military band on the first Sunday of every month at 9 a.m. at the Jamaica War Memorial and daily ceremonial drills. And then there's a synagogue, a theater, and a parish church. So nearby are the Kingston Synagogue, the only Jewish house of worship on the island, the Ward Theater, site of the public theater since the 1700s, and the Kingston Parish Church with a graveyard dating back to 1699. Which factors? All of them. So museums, art aficionados rave about the National Gallery of Jamaica, whose collection includes works of Jamaican artists from the 20s through today, including Edna Manley, Mayaka Capo Reynolds, and many more. The neighboring African Caribbean Institute of Jamaica offers insight into Jamaica's African heritage. Reggae buffs flock to the Bob Marley Museum, housed in his home and recording studio, and the Trench Town Museum, which offers guided tours of the neighborhood that produced Marley's and other greats such as Peter Tosh and Bunny Wafer. All right, so which museum do we need to visit if we want to learn about not only Bob Marley, but some of the other reggae greats? It was Trench Town. All right, popular Kinston hotels include the Courtly Hotel and Suites, the AC Hotel by Marriott Kinston, the Altamont Court Hotel, and the centrally located Jamaica Pegasus Hotel, as well as boutique properties ranging from the moderately priced Hotel Four Seasons to the ultra-modern Spanish Court Hotel and the Terra Nova All Suites with its white glove service. In the Blue Mountains, just 30 minutes away by car, 
clients can tour gourmet coffee plantations and relax in boutique properties such as Strawberry Hill Hotel and Spa. All right. Among Kingston's top attractions, art museums and galleries, yes. Pirate Past, yes. Colonial History, yes. Reggae Roots, yes. So Blue Mountains, so all of the above. Which of the following was dubbed the wickedest city in the world and featured in Pirates of the Caribbean? That was Port Royal. True False Bob Marley Museum is housed in his original home and recording studio. Yes. All of the following statements about Kingston are true except. Okay, so we got to find the one that doesn't fit. It's Jamaica's number one cruise port. Largest English-speaking city, capital and cultural center, situated on the... So it's it's not the number one cruise port. That was... Um, Ocho Rios. Yeah. Traces of Jamaica's British heritage and or presence on the island can be found in Kingston's 18th and 19th century buildings, the graveyard at the parish. Hmm. I say all of the above. Because it's just saying traces, so it doesn't have to be a lot of it. It just has to be. A, so I'm thinking all of the above. What do y'all think? Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Pleasant way to take in the beauty of the Blue Mountains is to hike, bike, ride, or visit its still functioning coffee plantations. This building was erected in 1881 and now houses restaurants, shops, and the flagship for Jamaica's premier ice cream. Devon. That was the Devon House. The highly acclaimed National Gallery of Jamaica has a collection of artworks from the 20s through today. Yes. Kingston has a great variety of hotels, including the centrally located blank and ultra modern Spanish court hotel. All sweets with its white glove service. Oh, uh, was that the Pegasus? Pegasus, yes. Strawberry Hill Hotel and Spa is located 30 miles from. The Blue Mountains. Yes. Or Port. It's the Blue Mountains. Yes. Is it? Okay. All right. Two more to go. Look at us. It may not take a whole hour. So we'll stop share and now we'll screen share again. Oops. All right, so the South Coast. For travelers seeking experiences off the beaten track, but still within the reach of the finer things in life, Jamaica's South Coast is waiting to be discovered, cruising along rivers, filled with wildlife to driving through rugged terrain or past fishing villages uh, to viewing English gardens and playing golf in cool mountain air. Lots and lots of stuff to do. Pretty. 
The South Coast has been called Jamaica's undiscovered coast and with good reason. It's only an hour from Montego Bay. Visitors can drive through fishing villages, view miles of beaches, and visit great houses and natural waterfalls. Aside from Sandal South Coast, the only grand all-inclusive resort on this side of the island. Accommodations on the South Coast, South Coast tend to be small owner-run hotels, guest houses, and villas such as Mike's River Hotel and Spa and Jake's Hotel on Treasure Beach. Cool. So it's very unassuming. Which of the following is so far South Coast only all-inclusive? That would be sandals. <laughs> Treasure Beach encompasses Billy's Bay, Frenchman's Bay, Calabash Bay, and Great Pedro Bay. A six-mile stretch of coves with areas, of course, black and golden tone sand beaches dotted with small hotels and seaside restaurants that serve fresh cut fish, conch, sea pus, I've never heard octopus called that before, and Caribbean lobster, along with local specialties such as aki and saltfish, jerk chicken and pork, and curried goat. Scenic and historical journeys. The town of Black River was bustling, important 19th century seaport as evidenced by, by its rich architecture. These days, it is also a center for boat tours on the Black River, Jamaica's longest navigable river and home to many species of plants and wildlife endemic to Jamaica, including 300 plus crocodiles. So advise clients don't jump in for a swim. <laughs> also tell clients to watch out for crocodiles who hold their mouths open for the herons that swoop down to clean their teeth and bladderwort, a plant that, sm that eats small animals. Oh, well, <laughs> let's, how about we just not send anybody to that particular part of Jamaica? <laughs> oh my God. Further along the coast, you've got the YS Waterfalls, which cascades into seven pools, is the setting for thrilling zipline canopy rides and other adventures. History buffs head towards Negril to explore the 19th century sugar plantations around the seaport town of Savannah Lamar. Yeah. So Savannah Lamar... Um, a garrison coastal fortress in the 18th century was important to the defense of the island. Uh, today, it is the town center in the heart of the island's sugar producing belt. It is close to the resort town of Negril, where many of its residents work in the hospitality industry. Thanks to a natural barrier provided by the central Santa Cruz mountain, uh, this part of the island is actually a desert where cactus, acai, and lignum vitae trays grow. Despite limited rainfall, much farming established much farming enables this area to be a major producer of fruits and vegetables. Appleton Estate Jamaica Rum Tour. A different kind of cure is on tap at the Appleton Estate Jamaican Rum Tour where clients learn the rum making process and then have a chance to juice their own sugar cane, sample white rum and boil wet sugar. Cool beans. Many legends surround the waters of the river and town of Milk River and the nearby mineral springs, which contain some of the most radioactive waters in the world. Okay, they're really not selling this area very well. <laughs> We've got crocodiles. I'm telling you. <laughs> Man-eating plants and now a radioactive. <laughs> Just saying. Oh, my God. 
The waters, about 90 to 95 degrees Fahrenheit year round, contain high levels of magnesium, calcium, sulfate, and natural chloride that are said to help sufferers of rheumatism, arthritis, sciatica, and nerve complaints. However, exposure to these hot radioactive waters <laughs> need to be carefully limited. I'm a little concerned by this one. <laughs> Mountain Cool Mandeville. If clients want a break from the heat, the mountain town of Mandeville offers a chance to play golf in the cool mountains. Um, the, impress the impressive mansions and gardens of wealthy 19th century British settlers who found this setting similar to home. Here, your clients will find the Manchester Club, which at over 2,000 feet above sea level, offers spectacular views. It was built in 1865 and is the oldest continuously operating golf club in the Caribbean, maybe throughout the Americas. On the Black River Cruise, your clients can view herons swooping down toward the water to clean the teeth of crocodiles. It's very disturbing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. All right, Treasure Beach encompasses which of the following? Billy Bay's, yes. Frenchman's, yes. Calabash, it's all of them. Yes. Black River is the name of a seaport and Jamaica's longest mm -hmm. navigable river. Mm -hmm. Home to those creepy endemic species of wildlife it's got going on. Your clients can learn a little bit about the history of the South Coast at Savannah Lamar on account of its sugar plantations. It didn't have anything to do with a fortress, did it? I don't know about that. Hold on, let me see. I don't think it, I don't think it was the one undiscovered coast that's all there okay so yeah maybe it's just a sugar plantation okay south coast can be described as extremely rustic and isolated well that's putting it mildly off the beaten bath but with access to upscale amenities a bustling business area a highly developed resort district. Uh, I'm going to say extremely rustic and isolated. What do y'all think? I thought it was the third one, but I think instead of bath, they meant path. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but I know it did say it was off the beaten path, but close to upscale amenities. Okay, well then let's go with that one and assume that it was a typo. <laughs> yeah, that's strange. Okay. All right, so the mineral springs near Milk River contain some of the blank water in the world, which can be extremely beneficial. Most radioactive. For a rum tour that lets clients juice their own sugar cane, send them to Appleton Estate. YS Waterfalls Cascade into Seven Pools helps create a scene for great, was it zip lining? Yes. Okay. I wrote that down. about how far is the South Coast from Montego Bay International Airport? About mm. an hour. All right, and what kind of accommodations make up the majority? That was small owner run hotels. Mm -hmm. The South Coast is often called Jamaica's undiscovered yeah 
Yes. Uh oh, which one did we miss? I think it had to do with the um with the bath. No, I'm thinking. Uh, I'm trying to remember that had to do with the um the fortress. I think it was both. It it was. That's what they said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One more to go. Let's All right. Five, six, seven. All right. I think this is our last one, guys. Experience Jamaica. Paradise in Jamaica can be whatever your clients want it to be. It's the third largest island in the Caribbean. Jamaica fascinates visitors who take the time to discover its diverse ecology, fascinating history, and engagingly outspoken people. Organized tours, attractions, and knowledgeable guides make it easy to explore the destination. It's impossible to see everything in one visit, nor should you try. You'll find that when you encourage your clients to get off the beaten path, they'll want to return again and again to experience more of the island. Waterfalls, rivers, rainforest. So Jamaica's most iconic adventures are climbing Duns River Falls and rafting down the Rio Grande, Martha Bray and other rivers, eco-tour companies such as Reliable Adventures can also take clients to less visited areas and falls, zip lines, a rainforest roller coaster, ATVs are among the thrilling ways to enjoy nature with adventure operators such as Shuka Caribbean Adventures, Mystic Mountain, Jamaica, and Island Roots Caribbean Adventure Tours. The Blue Mountains, Port Antonio and Kingston make great jumping off points for forays into the Blue Mountains, named for their often misty blue aspect. Here clients can hike, tour coffee plantations, rural villages, discover exotic bird and plant species, many of which are found nowhere else on earth. Special interest tours. One option includes a seven mile trek up the 7,400 foot high Blue Mountain Peak, the highest spot on the island. Participants depart with a guide at about 2 a.m. to arrive in time for sunset and then enjoy the views on the descent. Bike tours with stops for waterfall swims are available through tour operators, um, such as Blue Mountain, Jamaica Exploration and Hotel Mockingbird Hill. I'll specialize in bird watching, ecology, and history. Cockpit country. Inland from Montego Bay, cockpit country is a rugged, karst landscape of eroded loam, limestone sinkholes, caves, and caverns that is home to many species found nowhere else on the planet. It's un friendly terrain made it a stronghold of the Maroons. Tours of the area usually visit the town of Akumpong, home to one of Jamaica's most important Maroon communities. Um, clients will see the Kinda Tree, where the British Crown signed its first agreement with free Blacks in the West Indies, and a monument of Cujo, a Maroon leader believed to have supernatural power. There's rugged karst landscape, limestone, limestone sinkholes, caves and caverns, and some of the maroon communities. Let's see. All right, the maroons are descendants of slaves freed by the Spanish as they fled the island in 1655. They created their own society and fought off the British until signing a peace treaty in 1738. 
They still retain their own government, culture, and towns, which can be visited on tours in the Blue Mountains and cockpit country. Clients who don't want to leave the coast can get a feeling of the Maroons and other cultures that make up Jamaica in Montego Bay. Match each attraction with a selected feature. All right, so waterfall climb, that's Duns River Falls. All right, river rafting is the Rio Grande and Martha Bray. Come on. No. Stupid thing. There we go. Zip lining, roller coaster viewing. So I think it's in this direction. So Dunn's River is the waterfall climb. The Rio Grande and Martha Ray is river rafting, zip line, roller coast viewing in the rainforest, uh, 7,400 foot peak in the Blue Mountains, and then the landscape of the cockpit country. Agree, disagree? Agree. agree. Sports, Jamaica's sunny tropical climate and reef friend beaches make it ideal for outdoor sports from golf and scuba diving to polo all with glorious scenery. What is this cool thing? So does this like swim for you so you don't have to? <laughs> I've never seen this before. <laughs> I need to look into that. Because that looks like fun golf um jamaica has 11 courses each with its unique features to attract your golfing clients play may be part of the all-inclusive resort experience check with the individual resorts um so golf in montego bay golf central has five courses two robert von hege rick barrel design courses um You've got Cinnamon Hill laid out amid the ruins of former sugar plantations and White Witch defined by deep gorges and jungle groves. Then Robert Trent Jones designed Half Moon Course, deep wide fairways open to the Caribbean. Um, Ralph Plummer designed Try All Golf Club, Unusual Challenges, like a tee shot through the stone pillars of a historic aqueduct. Huh. So around Ocho Rios, uh, Sandals Golf Country Club, 18 hole layout and full B, G, full PGA quality par 72 golf course. And I believe if your clients stay at the Sandals Ocho Rios, Golf is included with them. And then a few other courses. You've got Negril Hig, Negril Hills Golf Club, the Caymanas, Constant Springs, and Manchester Clubs. Equestrian. Jamaica also offers a wide array of equestrian experiences. Tourist treks to instruction in dressage and show jumping. An island polo club offers lessons and the opportunity to participate in tournaments. Top riding schools include Half Moon Equestrian Center in Shuka Cove. All right, so diving, snorkeling, and other water sports. We've got diving. The North Coast is infringed with awesome reefs. Large swaths are preserved as marine parks where snorkelers and scuba divers can swim amid exotic fish and technicolor coral structures. 
client should check with the front desk at the resort to obtain information on the best experiences. Negril has two dive sites. One includes colorful sponge cloaked caverns and caves um, and a shark reef. Montego Bay scuba divers um, thrill to the renowned Widowmaker's Cave with a twisting route that starts 80 feet below sea level. Ocho Rios divers explore a coral encrusted former minesweeper that was purposely sunk to create a habitat. One of the most intriguing sites is the sunken city of Port Royal, but you have to have special permission to explore it. Snorkeling, lots of shallow sites in Negril and Ocho Rios. Um, while sheltered, Doctors Cave Beach, warmed by mineral springs, is one of Montego Bay's most accessible snorkel spots. And then some of the others, you've got reef sheltered waters um, that are good for sea kayaking, windsurfing, hobby cats. Some of the uh, larger resorts clients um, can angle for blue marlin and other game fish competing in tournaments, including the prestigious Port Antonio International Marlin Tournament. All right, some of the sporting competitions, cycling buffs. Uh, you've got cyclers can partake in Jamaica's Fat Tire Festival in February. It's a seven day mountain biking event. July, um, they can compete in the Maka Pro Surf Contest, part of the Caribbean Challenge Cup. You've got fishing tournament at the Montego Bay Yacht Club in September and two in October. The South Coast Hook and Line Canoe Tournament where they fish the traditional way with only a hook and line. And the Port Antonio International Marlin Tournament. Jamaica also hosts a triathlon every November in Montego Bay and an unusual reggae marathon in the grill in December, which keeps runners pumped running to reggae music. Part of an event collectively called the Reggae Marathon, Half Marathon and 10K, the music infused event has live performers stationed along the itinerary. December. All right, select all the correct. Among Jamaica's attractions for divers are awesome reefs, marine parks, caves, and caverns, even with a sunken city with permission. I say yes. To Jamaica's many courses has unique features. Yes. Snorkeling, kayaking, windsurfing, and fishing. Yes. And yes. So I say it's all four of them. Do you all agree? Yes. The motto on Jamaica's coat of arms reads out of many, one people and its cuisine, art and music serve as sensual guides to the many cultures that are blended here. Ooh, look at that. All right, chefs have a lot to work with in Jamaica. Uh, fruits, vegetables that visitors have never seen or tasted. Markets roadside stands are piled high with exotic fruits like sweet sop and star apple and amazing varieties of bananas, mangoes, melons. Aki, a yellow fruit resembling scrambled eggs when cooked, is served with salt fish as the national dish and bammies are cakes made from the cassava root, a staple of the pre-contact Tiano people. Then you've got homegrown beverages, including rums, Blue Mountain coffee, red, red stripe beer served ice cold or hot, meaning not chilled. Singular settings, delectable dining takes many forms. 
from roadside stands to open air seaside eateries to elegant white glove service. Uh, most big resorts offer a choice of restaurants. Uh, but if you they want to venture out, there's also way cool options off resort. Cook-offs and food festivals. Um, food is integrally tied to culture and celebrated through several festivals. BY Centene is held in February at Somerset Falls. Um, it celebrates Jamaica's African heritage with a Nancy storytelling, poetry, drum dance performances. April, you've got the Trelawney Yam Festival celebrating the created uses of the tuber in recipes and wines. Other foodie highlights include the grill off at the Hope Botanical Gardens, Kingston, Portland Jerk Festival the, at the Boston Playing Field. November brings restaurant week when eateries around the island offer heavily discounted prefix meals. Endless choices. Red Bones, located in New Kingston, is a top choice for ambiance and culinary creativity. In the grill, Le Vendome Restaurant offers a Jamaican take on elegant French cuisine. Montego Bay's Houseboat Restaurant, anchored a short boat ride from shore, offers a romantic setting. And Ocho Rios favorites include Tuscanini's located in the Harmony Hall Great House. Jerk is a traditional slow cooked method of cooking meat in a pimento wood lined pit. Acclaimed jerk stops include Bourbon Beach in the Grill, Scotchies and the Pork Pit in Montego Bay, and Blueberry Hill and GMB Jerk Center in Gulf Bay near Port Antonio. Ooh, I have people leaving for Negril in a couple of days. Might tell them about the Bourbon Beach. Yeah, for sure. All right. In music as in food, Jamaica's roots have blossomed into creative new forms from mento, ska, and rock steady to reggae, dance hall, and fusion. Music takes center stage at night um, with tourists and locals both enjoying the dance floor. Longtime favorites include Roof Club in Port Antonio, Risky Business in the Grill and a number of clubs along Mo Bay's Hip Strip, and at Margaritaville Clubs in the Grill, Montego Bay and Ocho Rios. Always a party. Duty-free goods, funny t-shirts, are abundant throughout. Best souvenirs come with a sense of place. It's Blue Mountain Coffee purchased at the plantation, hot sauce haggled for at a local market, or a carving or painting purchased at the artist studio. Gallery Karakou at the Hotel Mockingbird Hill display works of local artists and offers art classes. Oh, that's fun. Fine art galleries in, Monte in Montego Bay include the Gallery of West Indian Art, while traditional crafts such as straw baskets, batiks, and wood carvings are sold at the Old Fort Craft Park at Fort Montego in the Crafts Market on Harbor Street. And then Harmony Hill, 19th century great house, showcases the works of renowned Jamaican artist along with pieces by up-and-coming talent. All right. Exotic produce, creative cuisine, singular setting, food festivals. That's all in dining. The next one, Mento, Ska, Reggae. That's all in music. And then shopping. That's what I believe. What do y'all think? Agreed. All right. Weddings and honeymoons. Uh, most people's fantasy of the ideal destination wedding looks a lot like Jamaica. Uh, couples exchange their vows on a palm fringed beach. Um, the sea in a blaze of color. Tropical gardens. 
And usually they do it right at the resort because of the on-site wedding planners and they don't have to do anything. Uh, some of the more exotic settings, um, Jamaica's wedding planners also can arrange weddings at such places as in one of the waterfalls, a secluded cliffside villa, in a plantation great house, in any one of the small intimate churches. Um, couples have been known to exchange vows underwater, beside a waterfall, and even with the entire wedding party, all natural on a clothing optional beach. <laughs> More power to them. Uh, they can wed while gliding down river past plantations, remote villages, on a bamboo wrap. So basically... They can get married. If they can dream it up, it can probably happen. Mm -hmm. Oh, whatever your clients dream, Jamaica will make it happen. <laughs> 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 huh. Who would have thought? Uh, a lot of the all-inclusive offer free weddings, which generally include the services of a wedding planner, the officiant, flowers, champagne, wedding cake. Um, However, the trend has been toward more elaborate with larger guest lists. Um, so some are now starting to charge a nominal fee. And making it legal. Um, you can wed after 24 hours on the island by filing paperwork in advance. Allow four to eight months after the wedding for the couples to receive a certified copy of the certificate or with an express fee in four to eight weeks. There's no blood test. Um, you do need to show proof of citizenship, certified copy of birth certificate, parents' written consent if you're under 18, and a certified copy of a death certificate for widows, widowers. All right, so let's see. Jamaica lets couples get creative in planning a wedding party and honeymoon activities. So you've got beaches, the coral reefs, waterfalls. So again, falls into that whole, you know, if you can think it up, they can plan it. And then it's also a honeymoon haven where most couples are drawn to the ever more fantastic all-inclusive resort so with upgraded amenities such as Swim out suites, outdoor showers, private pools, hot tubs, stylish EP hideaways. So the non all inclusives EP is European plan. Hideaways like Half Moon with a dolphin lagoon, equestrian centers, golf courses are drawn to more intimate properties such as the Golden Eye, Round Hill, uh, as well as freestanding villas with butler, chef, and chauffeur services. And then, you know, Twitter, all of those. All right, waterfall, underwater, rafting villa, or great house. Those are all settings. From free to fully customized with every extra. Hmm. Free to All right. Y'all, this is what I think, but there's a few that I'm kind of waffling with. I put waterfall, underwater, rafting, villa, or great house as the settings from free to fully customized with every extra are the wedding packages. Um, all the paperwork, that's part of the um, requirements to get adventures in the settings. I chose the fun activities and then the honeymoon havens. And I'm kind of vacillating between the packages and 
honeymoon havens if I have them in the correct spot. Yeah, I kind of had it flip a new package. What do you think, Casey? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Okay, luckily it's only the pop quiz and not one for the grain. <laughs> All right, I'm going to submit it. Cool. You was right? I was right, yeah. Y'all need to see it. I don't know. I can't move the box. Got, yeah, no, I had it flipped. I switched it back, yeah. Okay, good. All right. So there's probably no better way to connect with a place than getting to know some of its people. Jamaica facilitates these meetings with a complimentary meet the people program and special events for a wide range. So some of the shared interests, you've got the Jamaica Tourist Board meet the people program so that uh, pairs visitors with individuals and families, a host Jamaican family. Um, so there's ambassadors. They just kind of show them all around the areas. And then many of the ambassadors also invite their guests into the homes for traditional meals. Um, and it, it is a volunteer thing. All right. Do we want to review the chapter or take the exam? I say take it. <laughs> a lot, a lot of information. Let's go. It is a lot of info. <laughs> All right. Which of the following is our among Jamaica's wealth of attractions? Ecology, history, engaging people, organized tours. I say all of the above. All right, jumping off points for the Blue Mountains, that's both of them, Kingston and Port Antonio. Inland from, from Montego Bay is cockpit country, noted for its rugged karst landscape, town of Kampong, home to an important maroon community. Why am I thinking it was not, I mean, it's all of that, but I don't think it was inland from Montego Bay, was it? Yeah. No, I thought it was like Port Antonio or Kingston, right? Yeah, I don't think That's what I was thinking too. It was a Montego Bay, yeah. I don't think I don't think about it. No, it is inland from Montego Bay. Mm -hmm. Oh. I'm looking, I pulled it up on um google and it's i think it's true actually but it's like way center montego bay is golf central with five no i think it said it had seven didn't it yeah i think it's seven Among Jamaica's attractions for divers is blank, a twisting route that starts 80 feet below. That was the Widowmaker's Cave. Shallow sites for snorkelers abound off Negril and Ocho Rios. Yes. Uh, 
A number of annual fishing tournaments include the Port Antonio International Marlin Tournament. Yes. Among Jamaica's renowned homegrown, homegrown beverages is our all of the above. Local rums, the Blue Mountain Coffee, and Red Stripe Beer. Jamaican cuisine is integral. Integral. I can't talk now. Tied to culture and is celebrated at several festivals, including Restaurant Week, held in when eateries around the island offer heavily discounted dining choices. Was that November? Hold on. Week. Uh, restaurant week in November. November. <laughs> the Akampong Maroon Festival dates back to the 18th century and celebrates their freedom. Jamaica's no worries atmosphere extends to weddings where on-site wedding planners are available to manage every detail. That is true. And Jamaica connects visitors with its residents through a Meet the People program matching shared interest. That is true. Oh, I wonder which one we missed. I think it's that one we were. The one we were vacillating on. Um, the the five course versus the seven cor courses. Yep. Montego yep. Bay. It is actually true. Dang, why did I have seven in my brain too? Because <laughs> something said, I know something said seven. <laughs> yeah, something did. But that's okay, because you know what? We have certificates. Yay! <laughs> Yay. <laughs> All right, guys, I am going to stop sharing. I am going to stop recording.